Welcome back. In the previous segment, we discussed a simple solution based on manual algorithms for our Marx display problem. Next, we are going to turn to somewhat more sophisticated solutions. So, to motivate those, let us consider the drawbacks of the previous solution. So, both queries are going to be too slow if the number of students, number of subjects is very huge. Say if you are going to do this for your entire university, then you will notice that the previous solutions will be quite slow. Okay. The marks query is slow because we go through the entire RSM tab on every query. So, we want to look for the marks of a given student, but we go through the marks, all the marks of all the students. Now, if we sort RSM tab by roll number and subject, we can use binary search to find the marks. Okay. So, we know these, we know this idea and if we implement these ideas, then we will be able to speed this up. The rank query, we calculate averages on every query. Okay, so, if I want the rank for a certain roll number, we calculate the average marks obtained by all ranks. If we then need to find the rank of some other roll number, we again go through the entire process. Okay. So, the natural question is why do not we do this once at the very beginning and then just store those things. In fact, once we have calculated the averages, calculating the ranks itself is just one additional step. And again, why should we repeat, I mean, why, why do not we do that at the very beginning? It will save us quite a bit of time okay, while processing the queries themselves. So, that is another thing that we should really be doing. Now, there is another approach besides sorting and binary search which will work. Okay. So, sorting and binary search will work, okay, but we want to suggest one more approach. Okay. And this approach is going to be based on maps. Okay. Maps effectively produce the effect of sorting okay. and accessing maps happens really by a process like binary search. Okay. In fact, sometimes it is even faster than binary search, okay. but let us say it is, it is sort of as good as binary search. So, effectively what happens is that if we use maps, we are going to get speed as well as coding simplicity. So, let us first look at the marks query. So, let me remind you what the query was. The query was M followed by roll number followed by subject code. And of course, you could have given the name, but let us that that is a minor matter. So, let us just focus on M followed by roll number followed by subject code. Given a roll number and a subject, we want to return the marks. Now, if there was one just one subject, what would you do? Well, since we know about maps, we could just use a map from roll number, roll numbers to maps. Okay. What can we do for multiple subjects? Well, we can use a map. So, the index will be a roll number and the value that the map produces for us could be something like all marks of the student. So, subject wise marks of the student. So, so the value that is produced is not one mark, but all marks. So, maybe it produces a vector. Okay. So, what do we do with all these marks? How do we go from all these marks to the marks in a particular subject? Well, a natural idea will be to use another map because what are these subject wise maps anyway? So, they are telling us that say in mathematics the marks are so many for this given roll number, for this fixed roll number, in physics the marks are so many, in English the marks are so many. So, this is again a map. Okay. So, the output of this map okay, which where the index is roll number is should naturally be another map. Okay. So, effectively what we are going to do is we are going to use a two level map. Okay. So, let us see how this works. So, the level 1 map, let us call it marks and marks of roll number, the value of the value produced by this map is itself a map. 
okay. And what is this? It is a map which gives marks of any subject given a roll number. So given a roll number means the index for this map, for this map that is returned by this map is the roll number, okay. So the overall map is as follows. So the, 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 the two level map is also going to be called marks, but if we just supply one index to it, it is going to give us a map and if we supply the second index, okay, which is the subject, okay, then it will give us the marks for the given subject for the given roll number. Okay. So how will we declare something like this? Okay. So the declaration is the first index type, the first index was a roll number, so whatever type we are going to have for the roll number we are going to place over here. And the first, the high, the overall thing is a map which takes a roll number and produces a value but the value is itself a map. But what is this value? It is a map from a subject type to a marks type. Okay? So uh, we are going to have two indices, the second index is going to be a subject index and the value that that returns is going to be a mark, marks type. Now in our case, roll number type and subject type are both string and marks type is a double and so the actual declaration is this. So map string, okay, map from string to a map from string to double. Okay? And if you remember, we have to put a space over here because if we do not then C++ will interpret it as the uh, input redirection operator. Okay, we do not want that to happen. Okay, so this is, this, is the, uh, this is the type declaration for our map. Okay? It really is similar to vector of vector of T okay? and uh, just as this is, this is a matrix or this is accessed using two indices, this is also accessed using two indices. Okay? So what is the solution for this query? Okay, or, or the entire thing actually, let us start with the entire thing first. Okay? So the main program you will see is going to be unchanged okay? and in a sense we should expect this because the changes are at a low level. At a high level the queries remain, the query format remains the same and our main entities, our main tables are going to remain the same but the internals of the tables are going to be different. Okay? And well, we are going to change the name of Rn tab to Nr tab for some reason which will become clear in, in a minute, but this is only a cosmetic name change. Okay? The program really is unchanged and there are again only these two tables. Okay? And while we have not designated any member functions as public or private, but if we were to and I guess once we are done we should designate some. Uh, functions as, as public and private. So the public member functions for uh, will remain the same. Okay. So uh, what are the public mention, uh, member functions for Rn tab? So there was lookup here and for Nr tab there was lookup and find rank. So those will remain the same. Okay. But the private member functions that we had, okay, they will be different and even the data members will be different and the entire logic of these two tables is going to be different because now they are going to be using maps. Okay. All right, so how does Rn tab or what we are now going to call an R tab work? So it will now hold a map instead of a vector. Okay. Now maps have a direction from in index to value and we want this table to give us uh, a roll number given a name. Okay? So the index is a name and the value is a roll number and therefore we are going to call it nr tab to say that it goes from name to roll number. So that is it, that is the only reason why we are changing a name. Okay? So nr tab is a better name and for some reason which will become clear a little bit later we are going to keep the reverse map also. Okay? But that is not going to be the main map. So in fact we will call it the reverse map. So to know what is reverse and what is forward, 
it is important to give NR tab as the name for the entire thing. Okay? So, we will see the details soon, in fact immediately uh, because now we are going to look at the unchanged main program and our main first major entity NR tab. Okay, so, this is our second marks display program and I have called it marks 3 sort of marks 2 would have used uh, binary search and sorting, but we have skipped that and we have gone directly to version 3. Okay, so, let me show you the main program first. The main program really has remained the same except for this name. Okay, the name is NR tab rather than RN tab. Okay. So, let us now look at this entity NR tab. Okay, so, here is our entity NR tab. Okay. So, as I said it is going to contain a table which is a map now okay. and it is a map from string to string, but it is a map from name to roll number and we will also keep a reverse tab. Okay, a, a reverse map and we will call it rev tab and it will give the name given the roll number. Okay, so, what does, how, how do we construct NR tab? Okay. So, the data is going to be taken from RN file which was a stream corresponding to the file opened already in uh, the main program. And we are going to go through this file or go through this stream and uh, as before we are going to read the pairs RNO and name. Okay? So, we need we uh, need the uh, read the roll number into RNO and if we find that the file has ended then we break. Otherwise, we read in the name and we store in the table the roll number corresponding to the name. Okay? So, now this is a map and so we can just store it in this manner. And by the way even here we are assuming that the names are single words. Okay. So, uh, as indicated earlier you can do a little bit more work to make to deal with the case where the names are longer and contain spaces. Okay. In the reverse tab we are going to store the roll number as the index and the name as the value. Okay. And now what does lookup look, up look like? Well, as before we are going to supply it an argument which could either be a roll number or a name. Okay? So, we are going to check is this does this appear as an index in the forward table okay? and for that we just have to ask tab of count of this greater than 0. If it is then we know that it is it is appearing as an index in the forward table so that is it is a name. So, in that case we are going to return tab of this index. Otherwise, we are going to check does it appear as the index in the reverse table. The reverse table has roll numbers as indices. So, if this does appear, we are still going to return that itself, but why we are doing this? Well, we want to know whether this is a valid roll number. Okay? So, if it is a valid roll number, then we will return itself. If it is not a valid name or not a valid roll number then we are going to return the empty string. So, this is exactly this this return protocol is exactly like the protocol that we had in the previous implementation as well. Now, I want to make a comment over here. This reverse table we are not using in, in any sensible way we are not really indexing into it. We are just checking whether the given the given string appears as a proper index okay or we are checking whether this given string is a member of the set of indices is one of the set of uh, is one of the indices in the set of indices in this table okay now for this we could have used the set data structure from the standard library and that's a simpler data structure but i use the reverse map since we have not really learnt about it. 
you could keep this implementation or you could you we could learn the set data structure and in fact now that you are coming to the end of the course you could get in, into the habit of looking up uh, about of looking up new things when you hear about them so this this is something that you could try out in any case i have told you how nr tab is organized and you are you can see that it is actually simpler because the whole searching business is now gone okay and the and the map data structure the map standard uh, library structure takes care of all of that okay so let's go back to the presentation okay so let's now look at rsm tab okay so rsm tab is going to hold two structures so there is going to be a tab which is going to be the two level map which we talked about earlier into which the cont content of rsm file is read but then as we discussed we are going to pre compute all the ranks to begin with okay and so this is going to be stored again in a map okay so its index is going to be uh, the roll number and we are we are going to calc uh, we are going to create this when we create the entire rsm tab okay so we are calling it the rsm tab but internally it also contains a table for the ranks okay all right so how does so so the how rsm file is read is probably quite obvious by now it is pretty much like how the rn file was read to create rn tab or nr tab we, we will similarly read rsm file and create this first tab okay how do we create the rank so that's a little bit more interesting okay so first we are, we have to calculate the average marks for each student okay so we have our tab and we want to add up the marks in tab of roll number okay so what is tab of roll number tab of roll number if you remember uh, is going to give you another map okay it's going to give you a sub map so what is that sub map the sub map is going to be a map from subjects to marks okay so this time we are going to so we have the sub map gives us all the subjects that this particular roll number has taken and we are just going to add up those marks and divided by divided by the number of subjects okay so this is how the sub map structure is actually coming in quite useful okay and then we are going to store the roll number and the average marks that we got over here into a vector called roll number average so this is going to be a second an additional uh, the data structure that we will need but this is going to be a very temporary data structure as we will see so we will not put it up as a major thing over here all right so we are going to store the roll number and average pairs into this vector then we are going to sort the vector so we are going to sort the vector so that by average marks okay and when this happens we will have the entries arranged in say we want decreasing order of average marks and so then we can go over these entries pick up the roll numbers as they appear and those are the rank holders so the earliest roll number is rank 1 then the next is rank 2 and so on okay so at the end of this step roll number average will now contain roll numbers in order of ranks and so we can just enter them into the map called rank okay so that is how all this is going to work okay so let's now take at the uh, take a look at the code of rsm tab okay and i want you i want to tell you beforehand that it's going it's going to contain the library class pair okay so this pair is going to be uh, used this pair is going to be used this is what is going to be stored in this roll number average the vector roll number average okay so let me just introduce this pair class a little bit so what is the pair class so the pair class contains two elements well after all it's a pair and it's really like a two element struct okay so it's a two element struct that you don't have to you can sort of define as you go along okay but there are some important things that are already defined for pairs so for example you can compare two pairs uh, 
without actually yourself defining a comparison operator. If you had defined a struct, then you would have to define the comparison operator, but if it is a pair, a comparison operator is implicitly defined. So how does this work? So it, if you are comparing two pairs, then you first compare their x values, then you compare their y values. And if you find that the x value of one is uh, smaller than the other, then you declare that to be smaller. If only if they are equal, only if the x values are equal, you move on to y. Okay? Okay, so here is another class and as I said, this is a new class. I am going to show you the class and I am going to explain enough about the class, but you should, you should not get scared of seeing new things at this point. Okay, so you are, as I said, you are pretty close to the end of uh, the course and uh, at this point you should, you should have the confidence to be able to look up documentation. So see the online documentation on pairs. Um, to know more about them. Okay, so let us now go and look at the code for RSM tab. Okay, so let me just make this a little bit bigger. Okay. All right, so as I said, this RSM tab. Okay, so this is the structure RSM tab our second major entity and we said that it contains this two level map called tab which will be indexed by first the first index being the roll number the second being the subject and then this is our rank map. So this given a roll number will return the rank. Okay. The construction of RSM tab is fairly straightforward I am not going to go through it but let me just look at how the ranks are going to be created. So for that we have a member function called setup ranks. Okay, so this member function will use a local variable which is a vector and this will contain the pairs, the elements of this vector will be pairs and they will consist of a double and a string. The double, the, 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 the first element of the pair will hold the marks, uh, sorry, the, yeah, so, so the first element of the pair will hold, is supposed to hold the average marks. When they, are, uh, when they are calculated and the second element of the pair is going to hold the roll number. Okay? All right, so how do we set up the ranks? Okay, so first we are going to go over the entire, uh, the entire RSM, uh, the, 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 our entire RSM tab. Okay? So RSM is going to be an entry in this table. Okay? So essentially we are going over each student. Okay. So remember that the first index of this is the roll number. So what we are picking out over here is an element of it. So which means for a correspond for a fixed roll number, okay, uh, we, we are going to get uh, the entry. Okay. So we are going to set total to be 0 okay, and we are going to calculate what uh, the total marks are corresponding to every entry in this. Okay. So um, the roll number is going to be obtained by taking the first element, the, the, the first member of this pair. RSM itself is a pair just like these other pairs. Okay. So, so the first element is this RSM dot first. Okay. So that is the roll number. And we are going to push onto this average rank. This part is going to be the average, and this part is going to be the rank. Okay, and this loop is going to be about calculating the average. So, how do we calculate the average? Well, we are going to set total to zero. Okay, and then we are going to go over SM, which is the second part of this RSM. Okay, so I think I should draw a picture over here. So tab was consisting of pairs. Okay, so the pairs we have called RSM. Okay, so there are several such pairs. And this itself consists of pairs because remember it is a two level map. So these are SMs. 
ok. So, RSM yeah so RSM consists of a uh, RSM consists of pairs ok. So, what does our tab look like? So, tab or rather I should say what does our our tab look like? So, tab you remember takes one index which is the roll number and the other index which is the subject ok. And uh, so, therefore, if I look at RSM which is an entry of tab, what does it look like? Well, this tab is a bunch of pairs ok. So, what are the pairs in it ok? So, each RSM looks like a roll number and then it looks like a map itself ok. So, this is the first and this is the second entry in this pair ok. So, when we over here when we fetch an element of this tab what we are getting is a pair like this ok. So, we have got the roll number. So, what we are doing in this loop is we will be calculating the average ok for a given roll number and then we are going to push that we are going to determine the rank for it uh, sorry we are going to determine the average for it and we are going to push it against the roll number. So, our average rank vector will get the average over here and the rank over here. So, as you can see that is the last step ok. So, ok. So, that is the last step in this first procedure ok. So, in the first procedure uh, we are so at this point we have only calculated the averages and they are pushed on this vector ok. So, how are they pushed? Well, this part is the roll number and this part is the average and this part is being determined over here. So, let us see how it is determined ok. So, RSM is all this. So, uh, RSM dot second is going to be this map. So, what is this map ok? So, this is a map from subject ok to marks. So, it is pairs of this kind ok. So, what is happening in this loop is that we are picking up each such pair. So, SM is going to be a pair subject and mark ok. So, SM is this. So, total ok uh, we are going to create a total for this given for this given roll number and we are going to add SM dot second to it. So, SM dot second is the mark. Okay, so, this we are going to add to total. So, at this point after we have executed this entire loop what do we have? Well, we have the total marks obtained by a given student in this variable total. So, if you want the average we are going to divide total by RSM dot second dot size. Okay, so, what is RSM dot second? Okay, RSM dot second is this entire thing. So, it is subject marks, subject marks, subject marks for a given student. So, how many such entries are there? So, the number of such entries are the number of subjects. So, in fact, this quantity is simply is precisely the number of subjects. So, we will indeed get the average marks over here and this is the roll number. So, at this point this vector average rank will contain the average marks and the roll number ok. Next we are going to sort this vector, we are going to sort the average rank vector. So, if we had just said the usual thing sort average rank begin to end then we would have got the sorting in increasing increasing order. We want it decreasing ok. So, we pass it the function greater ok, the greater is equivalent to the operator greater than ok. So, 
greater than if we pass the greater than operator over here then we are going to get sorting in decreasing order. Okay? Uh, otherwise by default if we do not say anything the less than operator gets passed over here okay? and therefore we get the usual sorting but we want the other sorting and since so since we wanted greater uh, we, we want decreasing order we pass the greater than operator. And I said earlier that all such operators are already defined on pairs and they are defined in sort of the lexicographic order that is they first sort on this field and then they sort on this field. So if this field is different then they sort on this field. But what is this field? This is the average and so at the end of it this vector will be sorted on the average. Okay? So it is sorted on the average. So all I have to do is to go through this vector. Okay? So we are going to examine every element of this vector and if I come to an entry of this vector what do I do? Well, each entry, the ith entry of this vector okay, has two parts. The first part is going to be the, the average marks okay? and the second part is going to be the rank associated with that average marks. Okay? But I do not care about the average marks, I, I care about the roll number and since this roll number average average rank of i dot second appears at position i in this vector, I know that its rank must be i if I count rank starting at 0, but I want to count starting at i plus uh, at 1 and therefore its rank I am going to set to be equal to as i plus 1. Okay? So what now I get is that I can I have built up my rank table as well, my rank map sorry uh, over here. Okay. So in my RSM tab I had this rank map and I have built it up as well. Okay. So that is it, so that is what we have said, uh, that is what we need to know about uh, uh, this RSM tab and our find rank function is now extremely simple. The calculation was already done. And so if the roll number appears in this as an index in this array, we just return the rank that we already calculated. Okay? Otherwise we return minus 1. I guess we could have even here uh, given that uh, use the protocol of returning a string and we could have said not found. Okay? But yeah, but that is an improvement that you certainly should make to this code. Okay, so let us return to our presentation. Okay, so as you can see, the code is actually smaller than the previous implementations okay? and that is because the library uh, holds is not only faster but it is also a lot more compact. The member functions for maps do a lot of interesting work, they effectively do something like sorting okay? and it is easier to understand actually because in some sense maps are intuitive, I mean the notion of mapping an index to a value. Uh, or uh, is, is, is quite easy to understand. Okay? So if you are having a difficulty with maps that is okay, in some sense maps are a bit of an optional part of this whole course. But I think many people will understand maps and uh, if you do I think uh, you, should, you should see how powerful they are and you should start using them when you code. Okay. And by the way in this entire thing I have used maps but I could have used unordered maps as well. Okay. So, so unordered maps uh, uh, will also be perfectly fine for all of this. And I should again point out that the main program has not changed. Okay. So in, the, in some sense this means that our decomposition of our logic into high level and lo low level seems like a good decomposition. Okay? So let me make some concluding remarks. Okay? So the main concern in this entire uh, lecture was how to organize code so as to put everything in its right place. Okay? Why should everything be, be in its right place? Well, it is like why should everything in the room be in its right, right place? Because if it is in its right place, we know where we should be searching. Okay, where we know where we kept it, where we know where we will find it, that kind of thing. Okay? 
then we should make functions small to improve readability, we should make code self documenting. Okay. Well, of course, we can write comments, okay. but uh, and we have not discussed that, but better than that is to write the code in a very obvious manner. Okay. So, give the names of the functions, give the names of the variables nicely so that the logic is very obvious. In addition to that, we considered some additional principles. Okay. So, we said something like represent important entities using structures. Okay. Then we said that if there is an important action, then you should have a function, a named function doing it or a named member function doing it because then uh, it is giving importance to that piece of code and giving it a name okay, which helps in readability. And uh, we also said that the main program should indicate high level program structure okay, and the details should get implemented in function calls. Okay. So, that concludes uh, this lecture and uh, we will uh, and, and uh, you are invited to go over the code and you are invited to make the code even more readable. Okay. And certainly you, you really should develop a taste and you do not have to you do not have to take my taste, but you should develop a taste and you should have a notion of what is the right way to write this place of uh, write this piece of logic. Okay? And you should try to develop a consistent style so that at least you yourself will be able to find your code and hopefully you will uh, it will be easier for other people also to understand your code and find things in it very easily. Okay. So, we will conclude with that and thank you.